And I know most of the videos that I make are to help people with computer problems, but I'm really excited to make this video because I know there's one person out there who's going to take this and actually take control of their credit and it's going to really help them. And if you're interested in this kind of video, make sure you watch to the end because once you see how it all comes together, it's not only going to excite you, but it's going to motivate you. So I'm super excited. Let's get going. The amount of credit that you actually use is called credit utilization, and that represents 30% of your credit score. There's a saying in the business industry that if you can't measure it, you can't improve it. And one of the things that some people have a real hard time with is sometimes their credit card debt gets out of control and they can't keep up with what payment they owe or how much they should pay or which one should they pay more on or even can they sometimes there's just so many things to keep up with that it totally melts your brain so what i want to do today is show you how to create a basic excel spreadsheet that's going to allow you to see on screen everything you need to know and it's going to auto calculate credit utilization percentage rates interest all of that stuff so that you can actually see at the end of the month where your money is going and maybe if you have a little extra where you should pay more on your credit cards to finally get control of your credit card usage. And don't worry, even if you've never used Excel before, I'm going to go through it step by step. All you have to do is open up your favorite spreadsheet program and just follow along. If you get stuck, just pause and rewind a little bit. And if you have any questions, feel free to just shoot them to me. Here we go. Now, this video is not a credit repair video. You are not going to create this spreadsheet and magically your score is going to go up 40 points. It doesn't work that way. But what I do know is that if you can't measure it, you can't improve it. And what I want to do is take you from having a stack of bills like this every month to one thing that you can look at on your screen and visually see where you can improve. And then once you have that, you can then see that if you have a little bit extra money to put it here instead of here, that will lower your credit utilization and your credit score will improve. So the first step in the process is you need a office program that can create an Excel spreadsheet. Now you can use Microsoft Office, you can use Open Office, you can use LibreOffice, you can use Google Sheets if you want. Anything that allows you to create an XLS spreadsheet will work and you can get any of these for free online. So we're going to assume that you have one of those, your favorite spreadsheet program, and we're gonna just create the simple spreadsheet that's gonna help you get your life back. So the first thing we have to do is we have to just start putting some labels down so that we can then fill in the information. Don't worry about all the numbers yet. We need to know what we need to know and then we can fill in the blanks. And I'm gonna show you the way I do this. You can tweak it any way you like. Right here in cell 1A, which is the very top cell, I'm just gonna put bill. Now I may move some of these around a little bit as I go through this, cause I'm creating this as we go. And I'll tell you that and show you exactly how to change it up. Again, the purpose of this video is to show you how to lower your individual credit card utilization, not only overall, but for each card. So we want to track all that information. Okay, so the second category I'm gonna make is available credit. The third category is I'm going to make it balance. So the next category is gonna be utilization because that's the big ticket. That's what we want to get lowered. Now already I can see that these letters are too big for the cells. So I'm going to click up here in this top left corner that highlights everything and I'm just gonna lower the font size down just a little bit so everything fits nice and pretty and I'm just gonna click over here to center everything because I'm kind of OCD like that in the next column I'm gonna make payoff date I may or may not use this one going forward but it might be important to you later so we're gonna go ahead and include that I'm gonna go ahead and type in payoff the next column I'm gonna make due date. So I'm just gonna go over here and type due date. That's just so you know what day of the month that particular bill is due so that you can figure out if I don't have an extra $10 on this day, but I have an extra $10 on this other one before the card is due, you could put that money towards that. We'll get to all that later. Okay, so I forgot one of the most important ones and that's the actual interest rate of that card. So I've already decided I'm gonna change it up just a little bit. I'm gonna make this column here the credit max the total credit limit on this card so i'm just going to click the the b the top of the column here i'm just going to go up here and insert a column and then i'm going to now type max now i know the maximum credit limit and then what i probably want to do is i want to change it up just a little bit i really want to switch these columns here because this represents the total credit line for this card i'm going to make this the current balance and then this will be the available credit. 
this is how we're going to start the basic setup and we'll probably tweak it a little bit uh, again you can move things around if you want change columns whatever you want i want you just to see how we can create this so that you can visually see all your credit on one page so now we have the basic foundation now it's time for you to gather up all your bills some of these you may not get paper bills you may have to go online and look but what we want to do is we want to start adding the information into the spreadsheet for the sake of this video, I was hired by someone to help create a spreadsheet to manage their information. I'm going to use their numbers and bills, but I'm not going to divulge any personal information. I've got permission to do this, so it's all good. Today's video is sponsored by Aura. Your odds of winning a lottery jackpot? About 1 in 290 million. But some people still play their favorite numbers every week expecting to win. Your odds of your house burning to the ground? 1 in 3,000. But you pay every year for homeowner's insurance, just in case. Your odds of having your identity stolen or being a victim of online crime? One in four. Let me say that again so it sinks in. One in four. And even though you spend all this money every year protecting everything else in the world, what are you doing to protect yourself against becoming a victim of online crime or identity theft? Unfortunately, a lot of people don't think about it until it's way too late. And that's where Aura comes in. And myself being a victim of identity theft in the past, trust me, that's a battle you do not want to fight. Data brokers sell your information to spammers and scammers. Your full name, your address, your phone number, health records, your relatives, it's all out there for the picking. We hear all the time about companies getting hacked and data breaches and all of that. AT&T just recently released that 73 million customer records were released on the dark web. And they recommend using strong passwords, monitor your account activity, and consider credit freezes or fraud alerts from the credit bureaus. But who has time to do all that? I know I don't, but Aura does. Their system shows me which data brokers are trying to sell my data and then automatically submits opt-out requests for me. They also protect me against hackers who are trying to get into my social media, bank accounts, and other personal information. Aura does all of this with just one app. To find out more, sign up for a two-week free trial at Aura.com slash AskYourComputerGuy and find out for yourself what's really out there with your name on it. What I'd recommend doing is just start with the bills off the top of your head that you know for a fact that you have and just put them in each category. So for example, one of the bills is the Apple card. There's two Capital One counts. So I'd say Capital One number one. Just go down to the next line and type in whatever credit card bill you have just by name. Don't worry about any of the numbers at this point. All we want to do is just list all of the items and then we can go back in and fill in the blanks. Now in a situation where maybe like in this example, there's actually three Capital One cards, but I only listed two, you could just go to the next line where you'd like to put Capital One number three, highlight it by clicking the number next to the row and just click insert row. That will then lower everything so you can then type in the third item. Now I've got all the bills listed and they're not in any particular order. What I want to do now is just kind of start tweaking it a little bit just so it looks a little more pleasing to the eye. This is totally optional, but this is just how I do it because I'm a little OCD. What I want to do is take all these bills here in this first column and justify them to the left. So I'm just going to click on the first item and just drag all the way down and then go up here to the top and click left justify. What I also want to do is I want to take the column headers and give them a color. So I'm going to take the first item that I want to select and just drag my mouse all the way over. And then I'm going to go over here to the fill color and maybe just give it a nice light blue. And I also want to take those same cells and I want to put a border around them. So I'm just going to click on the borders tab and now it's starting to look a little more organized. Now I can do the same thing here with the cards and just select the first one, go all the way to the last one, go over to my color choice and just pick a random color. I think I forgot to do this earlier, but what I want to do is I want to insert a column for the interest rate. I think I was changing some column headers and forgot to put it in. So I want to put it right here after utilization. So I'm going to click on this column that I want to move to the side and I want to click insert column. So in this case, I want to put interest rate. This next part is kind of boring. It's just me filling in the blanks with all the numbers from all the credit cards. So if you want to watch it, great. If not, skip ahead.
So now we have all the blanks filled in. The next step is just to show the available credit on each of these cards. And the process to do this is actually pretty simple. We want to put in column D2, the difference between the total credit line and the current balance. So all we have to do is just punch in a formula stating subtract column C from column B. Put your cursor in D2, you're going to type equals B2 minus C2, and then just hit enter. That will subtract column C from column B, and that is how much available credit you have. Now you can go and do this for each separate line. For the next row, you could do equals B3 minus C3, but there's an easier way to do this all at once with just one click. What you're gonna do after you create that one formula Take that bottom right corner and drag it all the way down to the last item on the list and let go. And your spreadsheet program will automatically calculate all of those for you. So you can just click once and drag instead of typing it every time. The next thing we want to figure out is the actual utilization percentage for each card. And again, we can do this with a simple formula. We just need to divide the balance by the total credit line. And that will tell us how much of that credit line we are using or our utilization. So in this case, you would put your cursor in F2, types equals C2, divided by B2, and hit enter. As you can see, it shows 53% utilization on this card. And as before, you can just click that right corner and drag all the way down to the bottom. It will auto-calculate all the utilization lines for every credit card on the list. Then you can just simply right-click those cells and choose formatting to make the number a little easier to read. Now, some of you may have noticed the Affirm items on this list, and I'm going to actually exclude these because Affirm is not an actual credit card. It's more like a purchase option on Amazon. If you don't want to spend cash, you can basically pay for something with high interest. Each individual item is treated as its own credit card purchase, and it's just really weird. And for the sake of this video, I just want to focus on the actual credit card. So I'm going to take all the Affirm options out of here completely and just move them to another worksheet. So just don't freak out when you see them gone. So now the spreadsheet is pretty much all come together, and what I want to do is I want to sort the cards by utilization rate. And the easiest way to do that is just to click the header column, in this case, the letter F at the top of that column. And then you can go to data and then sort and then uh, choose extend selection. And this may be a little different for your program, but this is open office. When you click extend selection, it's going to automatically bring up that utilization tab and you can then sort as you can see in this case it sorted it by lowest first so i'm going to go back and resort it and do it in descending order and as you can see the capital one card ending in 9824 has a 79.7% utilization rate that's the one that i would probably focus on paying down the fastest at that point i would just continue to work down the list and you can sort any of the columns that you want whether it's total balance or minimum payment whatever you want just select the header column and sort. Now that we have all the numbers for the individual cards and a better idea of where we stand, I want to calculate averages so that I can see my numbers go down over time. And here's how you do it. The no most important number for me is the average credit card utilization. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my cursor in F12 and then I'm going to type equals average parentheses F2 colon F10 parentheses and then hit enter and as you can see what that will do is calculate all the cells between f2 and f10 and give me an average of those numbers at 37.83 is the average utilization rate for all the credit cards on this list and if you want to calculate your average percentage rate over all the cards you can just go down to the g12 section click your mouse type equals average parentheses g2 colon g10 parentheses and as you can see here the average interest rate is 29.73 you can do that for each of the columns going across that you want to get a statistical average for everything in the list and as you decrease these numbers those averages will obviously drop and of course you can spruce it up a little bit with some cell formatting however you want to do it so you can easily see those numbers at a glance that's entirely optional but i think it looks nice
So now we basically have the spreadsheet complete, but I want to show you a real world example of how watching this spreadsheet change over time is going to be motivating for you. So I want you to focus on cell C2. That is the capital one with the highest utilization rate. What I'm going to do is hypothetically pay that off. I'm going to get rid of that $1,594, but I want you to watch what happens to C12, F2, and F12 once you change that number to zero. You're going to see all these other numbers change and go down every time you remove some of your balance. And as those numbers go down, your credit score is going to go up because your outstanding balance is lower, your overall utilization is lower, that's going to increase your credit score. So watch what happens when I pay off this Capital One. Change the balance to zero and look at all the other numbers drop instantly. Now seeing averages is great, but we also want to maybe see what our totals are, including total available credit, outstanding balance, total minimum payments, all of that stuff. Again, super easy. So just go down to another line, in this case, line 14, and start with totals. And then in the first category here, which is gonna be total credit line, we're gonna do equals sum parentheses B2 colon B10, and then hit enter. And that will give you the total for that column. The next column, which is total balance, is equal sum, parentheses, C2, colon, C10. And do that same thing over again, equal sum, parentheses, D2 to D10, parentheses, enter. And then just go over to each column, increasing the letter as you go. And again, I'm going to just customize the cells so that they stand out from the other ones. Again, totally optional. So I hope you actually got some value from that. I know that for my client, this information is going to be super handy because now they can see at a glance their most damaging credit cards. They can see the total amount of monthly payments that they have to make on these cards. And again, once you see it on paper, suddenly now you have power over it. If you made it this far, I really appreciate it. I know this isn't my normal kind of video. Make sure you let me know in the comments how many points you gained month after month because of the spreadsheet. If you did like this video, I did make another video about the basics of Microsoft Excel. You might enjoy it. I'll put it right up here if you want to watch it. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one.